Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I'm Barb Owen, and this is Drama Free Friday. Hi, Jennifer. Nice to see you. Welcome. Yeah, it's Drama Free Friday. I'm so glad you're here to join me, whether you're watching in person and during the live show or you're watching uh, the recording. If you're watching the recording, thank you so much for taking your time to watch. Hello, Dawn. I need to write that down in case I haven't. I need to write that down. That that's your name. I love that. Let's make a mess. Because <laughs> I can't, I can't remember that. Hi, Vicky. Nice to see you. Seventy Acres Studio. Melissa. Hello, Melissa. Hi, Judy. Hey, Alice. Good to see you. Hi, Rowesta and Carla. Ina. Oh, we got it. Hi, Ian. We got a great group coming in here today. You can't wait to see what we're making. We're finishing what we started last week. Or we're going to work on what we started last week. That's what we're doing today. And a few other things. Hi, Carol. Um, you can't find my live stream on YouTube. You just go to my channel and it will show that I'm live. Um... Carol so you can go just search Barb Owen on YouTube and it will come up with the channel and it will show that I'm live hi Dana good to see you hi Cindy you can go to the website and click on live you can do that yeah there's a variety of ways to get here lots of ways uh, so yeah hi Leanne Nova Scotia welcome hi Barbara good morning to you hi Patty Skinny Cat Creations, nice to have you here. Hey, Steven, good to see you. Skinny Cat, I don't think I have a name for you. If you want to share your name, I'll be glad to call you something besides Skinny Cat. <laughs> but if you want to be called Skinny Cat, that's okay with me too. Steven, did you get your studio reorganized? I watched your organizational video, so I know you got done, but... Are you, do you get all the finishing touches on your reorganization? seems like everybody's in that frame of mind right now, except for me. <laughs> Hi, Marion. Nice to see you. Hi, BJ. You're going to be quiet. Okay. Hey, Michelle. Michelle B. Okay. Nice to have you here. We have, we have a couple of Michelles, so thanks for putting your last initial in there. Um... Ah, Ian just finished swatching uh, Pedro, Pedro, Pe I don't know the name, I don't know how to pronounce that, Pedio, Pedo, Pedio watercolor test strip. I don't know what that is, but good for you. <laughs> um, hi, Lindy. Hi, Janet. Hi, Marion. Carrie is skinny cat. Thanks. Oh, good. I'm glad you love it, Stephen. Yeah, another way you can, can know that we go live, if you will check down in the description box below the video, one of the first little things in the description box says sign up here to be notified when we go live. Another thing you can do is you can click the little bell under the window, and that sends out, that fires a notification. So there's different ways to know that I'm live. PBO. Okay, maybe PBO. Okay, PBO. I was trying to I was trying to make I thought maybe it was something new, P E D E O. I thought maybe it was something new. Hi Lorraine. So PBO has or PEBIO, I'm not sure how you say it. They have watercolors as well as I know they have acrylics, but I didn't realize they had watercolors. That's cool. Hi Mare. <clears throat> Hi Lori. Hi Nancy. Good to see you guys. Thanks for joining me today. It's so nice to have you here. So we're going to just jump right in because we got a lot of stuff. Yes, that's right, PBO. Okay, that's that's cool. So how, how do you like them, Ian? Tell us how you like the PBO things. Hello, Braddy Patty. <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> Hi, Leanne. 
Yeah. So th- there's just different ways to find out that we're live. So, you know, you can, you can, uh, sign up for the emails. You can click the notification bell under the video. There's lots of different ways, or you can go to the website and click live and that'll get you here too. Hi, Deborah from Scotland. Hi, Jessica. Nice to have you guys join us. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your weekend, almost weekend to be here. For some of you, it probably is weekend. Those of you in Australia and New Zealand, it probably is the weekend. Uh, yeah, Stephen, Stephen's done some really cool experimentational videos with some of the acrylic or oil products that PBO has out. I'm not real familiar with them, so I'm speaking out of ignorance here. Um, but he's done some some really cool pouring videos. So if you if you don't know about um, if you don't know Stephen Bland, he's in the chat. You can click his name and find out his channel. And he says they take about 72 hours to dry completely. Boy, that is that requires patience. <laughs> Kudos to you, Stephen. Uh, hi, Trudy. Manitoba, nice. <laughs> That's right, let's get started. From Estonia, wow. I don't know how to say your name for sure. I'm going to guess. Marjan? Marjan? Marjan, I'm going to guess. You can spell it phonetically if you can in the chat, and then I'll pronounce it correctly or try to. Yeah. Ah, so anyway, it's great to have you all here. Hi, Yvonne. Thanks so much for being here. Okay, so I've chatted on for a minute. Um, hopefully, Carol, Whippy Carol, that answers a couple of questions about how to get here and know that I'm live. Hi, Sheila. Um, hi, Carol. Nice to have you. Hey, Laura. Art anxi- Anxiety Art is Laura. And Jennifer from Texas. Yay. Oh, okay. She's Danish but lives in Estonia. How great is that? Okay, I still i am not sure how to say your name. So if you want to write it phonetically. Hi, Petka. You always find me sooner or later. Okay. <laughs> so Ian says that for student, the student set is well pigmented and the colors are good. He picked up a set of 12 half pans for $12.96 or 10 pounds in um, UK. That is an amazing price. That is an, 12 half pans for just about a dollar a half pan. That is an amazing price. If you guys are into watercolor, you might want to check that out. That was from PBO. That's from Ian. He's been swatching those out. Um, hi, Linda. You're here on time. Yes, you are. Hi, Kathy. Hi, KB. It's nice to have you guys join me today. Thank you so much for being here. So we got a lot of stuff to chat about, so we're going to just jump right into it. Okay. One of the things that I talked to you recently about the Mandela books that I have out, and I thought maybe some of you, I have quite a an audience that a lot of new people that are finding me, which by the way, thank you so much for joining us and coming over and spending your your time with me. I appreciate it. Hey, Dorothy. Hi, Gail. Um, I know that... Um, Hi, Erin Kelly. I know that uh, the videos are long, and but that's just the nature of streaming long. So if you're watching the recording, you can always watch it in double time, which makes my voice sound funny, but that's okay. You can mute, or you can scrub through the video at the bottom. So there you go. Anyway, so I thought I would tell you and show you, because some of you are new to me, tell you that those... Mandela books are not the only books that I've written, so I thought I would just give you a quick look-see at those, at the other books. Got stuff stuck in this one. That's typical. Do you guys do that? Do you, like, stuff all kinds of stuff inside your books? Oh, I'm telling you. I do that. So I just thought I would show you the other books that I have here. And this is my very first book that I wrote and this one is called Creating Faces Needle Sculpting from the Beginning. 
So this book is all about needle sculpting. I was a doll maker for a lot of years. I still do doll making, but um, this particular book is one of the books that I I was encouraged to write by a fellow doll maker because there weren't very many things out in the world about needle sculpting. So there's a lot of text in the beginning of it because there's a lot of introductory stuff. But this particular book is about four characters and their names are Nosy, Drowsy, Sneaky, and Cutie. And so this is, there's a chat a little bit of introduction about them and then when you get over into the actual part of the book this is nosy and so it's taking you through the creation of nosy and beginning just the very basic steps in needle sculpting and then once you get nosy all sculpted then there are steps later to show you how to color her and then we have drowsy so this is drowsy. So it's additional, uh, everything is stepped out in color photos to show you how to create nosy. And then we go on to cutie and so forth and so on. Then when we get to the end of the book, or the latter part of the book, it shows you how to color. And I use colored pencils and pens. So it's really detailed stepped out photos one step at a time to show you how to do needle sculpting and coloring faces. And these are three-dimensional faces. And then the very last part of the book, this was this book was put out a number of years ago in black and white, and this is all now obviously in color. And then we added extra an extra chapter or two and a lot of extra photographs too in color. So this takes you through some uh, some ways of how you can take one of these spaces if you don't want to make a doll out of it and you can actually make her into what I call a flower face. And then there's some different ideas about different kinds of flower blooms and so forth. So this is my the first book that I did and this is the second edition. So this is version 2.0 as we like to say. Hi, Krissa, and anyone that's coming in, thank you so much for being here. Um, so this is the first book that I created. This particular one is available on Amazon. It's also available as a download in our shop, and I'll show you that in a minute. So this is Creating Faces Needle Sculpting from the Beginning, How to Needle Sculpt the Perfect Doll Face. My uh, The next book after that was completely different. This is called Normal Doesn't Live Here Anymore. An Inspiring Story of Hope for Caregivers. This is all about, this is actually my first art journal. And um, this is all about taking care of my parents and the journey that I went on with that. Um, interesting adventure. And inside this book, you will find all of the illustrations in it are done by me. And these are excerpts and uh, ideas and various things taken from my art journals and these are these are really good to color with colored pencils as well so it is the story of taking care of my parents but it is illustrated all the way through with various and sundry images from art journals and in this it really is my my first art journal so you can see images all the way through so this was my first it's a it's a hefty book. This one is available on Amazon as well. It's also available as um, an audio book. And so this is the audio version. So this particular book you can only get on Amazon. The audio version is actually read by me. And so I am the, the author. I've illustrated, I wrote the book illustrated the book and then read the book also for the audiobook. And the music that's on here, this is all directed by Race. I think he, I saw him in the chat. Race directed and produced this entire book. And the music that's on it is written and performed by, by him as well. So this is all of the chat or the um, segments. I don't know what you call it on these. The chapters, segments, whatever. Anyway, this is the whole book. Unabridged. 
And so this is only available on the howtogetcreative.com website. Race is not here. Okay, he's not here. That's good to know. I don't have to worry about illegal fluids then. So anyway, if you want to listen, I've had a lot of people say, <laughs> I'm not sure that I know why, but I've had lots of people say how much they like to listen to my voice and that they find it calming or whatever. So if you want to listen to a lot of Barb, <laughs> you can go get this audio book on the website. So again, I'll show that to you in a minute. So I thought you might be unaware that I had those other books that I had authored and that we had produced. And then, of course, we have our medley mandala books. So I thought I'll show those to you real quickly one more time for anybody that didn't know. Um, so this is Mandela Melange. This is version 2.0. So this is the latest version of Mandela Melange, which does include additional patterns. More than the original pattern, all of the images in here have been remastered. And um, so you can print them out and you can do all kinds of things with those. So that's Mandela Melange. Our very newest book is Mandela Medley. And these are downloadable ebooks. And so this is Mandela Medley. Mandela Melange has 30 patterns in it. Mandela Medley has 25 all new patterns. Some of them are much more detailed than others. Like this one has a lot of blank space. That you can do your own embellishments. Some of them include lots of embellishments. Like this one is much more highly embellished. So Mandela Medley. And then, of course, we have the free ebook available for you that's called Mandela Madness, which is also the name of the upcoming video course that we have um, coming out very shortly. So this is Mandela Madness, and this is free, and this has five different images in it, five different mandalas that you can color or create and use for different, different ways if you'd like. You can take all of those to your local office supply store. You can take them on a thumb drive or you can send them to your local office supply store and you can have them print them out on uh, on their toner based uh, machines and so forth. So thanks Lorraine. So uh, yeah so if you have any questions now that I'm looking at the chat if you have any questions. Oh who colored the cover? The cover on uh, this one the cover on this one that was covered by colored by Claus Man. Yes, it was. Claus Man did that. I he did all of the color work and then I did the embellishment pen work on it. So yeah, so you get art from two people. Two people. Uh, okay, so any I, if you have any questions, be sure that you put them in in caps so that I can see them. Yes, there is a Kindle version of Normal Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Thank you. I forgot to mention that. So, yes, there is a Kindle version, too. Yes. Okay. So, let's take a little tour here for a second. All right. So, we're going to take a tour because I thought, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We need to be do another big drum roll because this week a big thing happened. Season four of HowToGetCreative.com classes officially launched, and that happened this week, season four. So we are into our fourth season of classes. And also between seasons three and four, the, we have a number of preview classes that are slotted in between seasons three and four. So there's a bunch of extra stuff in there. Anyway, so I just thought, you know, in honor of season four getting underway, which is in the membership of howtogetcreative.com. I thought I would just take you inside the website so you can kind of have a look around and see what it's all about. So let's take a look at that. So give me just a second to make the switch here. And see if we we'll see if I can we'll see if I can do this. So for the next couple of minutes while I'm doing this I won't be able to see the chat, so if you'll save your questions for me, that would be 
ever so nice. And my uh, my helpers in the chat will field questions if ne if necessary. So here we go. Okay, so when you go to howtogetcreative.com, this is what you're going to see, first of all. Uh, this is the front page of the website when you get here on the home page. And if you scroll down, you're going to see all the blog posts. There is a blog post that I write and post every week from each and every one of the live streams. So this was um, about Mandela books. This was about... Um, the, the new class that just launched in season four. And it looks like I missed making the, the last blog post from last week's video live. So I'll have to go back and do that. I don't know how that happened. Maybe Race can fix that up in the background. He might check the blog post and see, because there should be a new blog post on here with the, um, the canvases from last week. Well, anyway, we'll just move on from there. If you scroll down, you will see view all video classes and blog posts and some other various information down here toward the bottom. And then there's a button that tells you that you can sign up and that's where you can become a member. But I want to show you the rest of what is up here at the top just real quickly. If you click on the t videos, it will pop out a menu and show you all the different categories or most of the different categories that we have classes. So we have art journaling, art supplies, <clears throat> books. <clears throat> Excuse me a second. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice went to pot for a second. Um, books, doll making, fabric, flowers, notions, know-how, paper, needle sculpting, needle felting, sewing machine techniques, and then we have all of our um, streaming videos here for convenience for everybody as well. Um, you can connect with us, uh, of course, in all the usual places, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest. This is how you can get to us if you are having trouble finding us live on YouTube. You can come here and click the button live and that'll take you right over there. And maybe you don't know, but we have a newspaper that comes out every day. So you can find the newspaper here, or you can um, sign up for it, which is easy to do, and it will come right into your, your uh, inbox every morning. And so it's a newspaper filled with all different kinds of articles to inspire and um, just, just let you find some cool things, maybe introduce you to people that you didn't know about, and so each one of these things are a link, and so you can go and visit all these different people and places and, and um, just cool things of inspiration. And let's see, let me get back here. And then of course we have the shop, and in the shop we have the gift shop which is where you can find the books. So this is where you'll find the Mandela books. This is the free one, the free book, the Mandela Medley and Mandela Melange. There's also a menu here on the side that makes it easy to navigate. If you look a little bit further, here's where you can find the Creating Faces. This is the ebook version. If you want the printed version, you need to go to Amazon. If you want the ebook version, you can get it right here and you can either have it on your computer, you can print it out, whatever is convenient for you. Here are the rubber stamp faces. We still have some of these left. I am down at the final quantities of these. So we're going to have to decide if we're going to re reproduce them or do new ones or what. But these are still available right here. And here is the audiobook. So this is the audiobook. Normal doesn't live here anymore with lots and lots of Barb's voice on that. Mm hmm. Yes, indeed. Okay, so let's go back here one more time. Whoops, we don't want to look at the paper anymore. Let's see. Let's go back here. And we'll just go back. We'll just go back to the blog for a second. And so here you can see all of the, oh, there we go. Here's the mixed media animal portraits, number one. So there is the blog post about that. 
And if you click on any of these, it will take you to the blog post. And you'll get to read whatever it is that I happen to wax on about that particular day. You can watch the video right here. And there's always a little blurb about what we did, kind of a summary of what we did. And I always try to recap as many of the products as I can. If they're in purple, they're linked. If they're not, like this one, that one is no longer available. But I still wanted you to know what it was. And then you can scroll down and you can leave comments down at the bottom. We always enjoy reading your comments. And then you can share it on Facebook and Twitter and so forth if you like, which is great too. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's say you sign up for a membership or you just, you're just you curious about the membership. Let's look at that first. If you're curious about the membership and you don't really know what it's all about, you can come to the page here where the, there was a button that said sign up um, or become a member. Anything that you're curious about, there's lots of buttons on the pages or text that will get you to this page. And what this allows you to do is just take a look. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Barb Owen. And Barb will tell you all about the website membership. And you can sign up here. And you can get started for just a dollar. It's all about making it um, you know, available to you in the way that you want to look at it. And how do you want to be a member? Do you want to just try it out? Or do you just want to jump in all the way? What do you want to do? There's all kinds of ways for you to do that. After you do become a member, then you, this is where you land. You come inside the web, the membership area, and then you'll see this is all based on video classes. So here are the categories. And when you look at that, these are all the classes that are currently available in art journaling. These are all the classes currently available in art supplies. These are all the classes in books. We even have some a couple of classes on carving, doll making, classes on fabrics, on flowers, on notions, on paper. And there's a bunch of several different classes on paper. In the paper area, there's even the class about how to draw dogs and cats, which is what we're uh, using some of those drawings in the class today. Some sewing things. We have sewing by hand. We have needle felting. We have needle sculpting classes coming soon. And then we have all kinds of sewing machine techniques as well. So you can see those as you scroll down there. So we've got several classes under that. Then we have lots of tips and tricks. I'm going to click on this one just so you can see what is in tips and tricks. These are shorter videos. They're just little quick things for people. And well, I say quick, some of them are longer than others. Um, but the tips and tricks are just various and sundry things that I think um, are, are helpful for people to learn about, you know, and, and they cover all different kinds of creativity. Some are things about my favorite books. Some, like this one is nonstick craft mats, different kinds of mats, um, different kinds of crayons. Um, Mary Ellen Best Press, what is that? Different kinds of books again, how to work, how to clean things up, how to install gripper snaps, um, how to patch a pocket, how to store stencils, and so forth and so on. So there's a whole bunch of tips and tricks videos and then also we have for the vip members if you're a vip member then you have a whole set of classes just for you all right here we go and once a month the vip members come over and take a class with me live in person well live in person via computer but it's a live class, and so we have a variety of classes there. So that's kind of the overview. What I wanted to show you here, too, is here is Season 1. So if you want to just look through the Season 1 classes, they are all listed out. We have Season 2 listed out. So everything's broken out by season as well as category. So season 3. We have Season 4. So here are the preview classes I was talking about. So we have a number of classes there's nine different classes here 
that were between seasons. And then season four has just started. And this is season four, the very first class, which is how to create a folded boxes book. And so the class opens up, gives you a little information. The season classes include class notes. And so this is a fully illustrated tutorial. They're usually a number of pages long, like this. You can download those and keep those in your, um, in your computer. If there's a pattern, that's available for you. And again, you can download it into your computer and print it out, or you can just keep it in your computer if you prefer. And this particular class was long enough that we had two parts to it. So we have part one and part two. So this one is a nice long class. And with that, um, yeah, I'm just going to just take us back to, whoops, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Barb, yeah. Barb doesn't always do the smoothest transition, does she? <laughs> doesn't always do the smoothest transition. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a little look around the website so you could kind of get a behind the scenes look just in case you were curious about what is how to get creative. And what is how to get creative.com? It is a website built for creativity and inspiration. That's the whole point. Um, and it's all done in a step by step fashion. So with videos and video to and um, written tutorials for all of the season classes. Those all have written tutorials. Often there's a pattern, but not always. And um, anything that, that goes with those classes is all step by step. So you should, no matter what level you are, when you come into a class, you should be able to um, jump into it and have fun with the class because it's all about creativity and inspiration and having fun. So. I just wanted you to see what you do. What I do in my spare time. Yeah, you guys want to know what I do in my spare time. Sometimes I sleep. <laughs> Sometimes I sleep. Let's see, what else? Uh, this week we launched um, the website, Season 4. We also put up the video, What is Power Carving? So that is on YouTube, What is Power Carving? And you'll see Claus Man as I talk to him about power carving because I know I knew that he did it because obviously I live with him um, but I, I really had never stopped to discuss it with him so that was fun for me too so we filmed that together about what is power carving because many of you know that he is a wood carver but sometimes you have to break out crank out the uh, power tools for some woods and things thank you Kasha um, let's see um, what else? Uh, oh, and also this week, we had another another special thing that happened this week, and that was we had a special guest from Australia. She was here in my studio with me, and we did stream that visit with her, and that her name is Ozzy Grand Jen. And so she was here from Australia with her husband, and so we did a, a um, spent some time together. So you can see that on the YouTube channel here as well. So, okay. So, um, any questions from anybody? If not, we're going to go forward because all I've done is just rattle on. All right. Last week we started this project, which I am calling Mixed Media Animal Portraits. And... Yeah, Michelle says she learned to sew by joining the website, which that is just a great compliment. I'm just, that just makes me feel so good that, that Michelle could do that, that she could learn to sew based on the website. So that's cool. So last week we started talking about the animal portraits and we started doing those and I'll show you those. I have them in various stages today. And I said that it was that my animals were inspired by a class with Carla Sondheim, which was not completely true. They were actually, I don't know what I was thinking, but I sort of spaced it off. They were actually inspired from her book. And so I wanted to show you that in case you're not familiar with her book. 
So here is her book. This is Mich or, uh, Michelle. <laughs> Listen to me talk. I'm looking at the chat instead of looking at what I'm doing. This is Carla Sondheim's book, 52 Creative Exercises to Make Drawing Fun. And it's Drawing Lab for Mixed Media Artists. And in chapter one, it's called Inspired by Animals, and or Unit One. And this is exactly where the inspiration came from. Because in this chapter, she has... The first lab is called Cats Draw Cats in Bed. And so that is exactly what I was playing around with, was, you know, this concept. And then I took it off in my own direction, which is the whole point of any kind of uh, inspirational book, is to get you started, and then you just take it off in the direction you want to go. This is a really fun book. She takes you through lots of different interesting techniques and so if you are not familiar with Carla Sondheim's work, I suggest that you look her up and, you know, check out, check out her book. She does lots of classes. She has a class website as well. Um, so here are the, here are our dogs and cats that were inspired from the jumping off point from Carla's class or Carla's book. See, I'm doing it again. Anyway, so we have the sponsors. So we have two sponsors, one fatter than the other, because the sponsors I live with, aka Chance and Charlie, who are just two great big fat Siamese cats, one of them is fatter than the other. This is Charlie, this is Chance. And then not to be left out, Muppet wanted in too, and so we have a Muppet. And Muppet is our little rescue dog. She doesn't look like this, but, you know, she wanted to be in, in the whole, um, she didn't want to be left out. So I took those drawings, and we do have a class on the website about drawing dogs and cats, and I show you how to do this. And you'll be able to do it, even though you think you're not going to be able to do it. I'll show you step by step how to do this. And so we took those, I took those drawings, the small ones, and I enlarged them to 165%. And so that's what I have here. And from that, I created the animals. So here is the Muppet, so the Muppet went from this to being enlarged, and then these are all fabrics. Um, you think I'm tired? <laughs> not, not really. Um, but thank you for caring. So these, pic these um, are all fabrics that I painted or jelly print with the jelly print, um, jelly plate, or just different kinds of scraping and different kinds of things. Many of these I've done on stream with you guys. This is her tail, which will fit on the canvas as well. And so she is all put together to form in one applique. Okay, so she's all done in one applique. So I showed how I did this last week. I talked about it. And so she's all ready to go. She's wearing her, um, I don't know if Janet is here, but Janet, she's got her pearls on. She's not clutching them, but she has her pearls on. And she has bows in her hair or her ears, as it were. And she has a tail, and I'm trying really hard not to lose her tail. So I'm going to just kind of leave it here. So she's all ready to go. And I'll show you the sponsors. Um... The sponsors canvases in a little bit because we'll be using those so here's what we did last week we created the canvas so this is an 11 by 14 canvas and it this was done with some uh, collage in the background <coughs> hang on just a moment So we have some collage in the background. There's some music paper, some tissue wrap, some um, 
um, various text papers and so forth. And the color on this is not great, so let me show it to you with a little bit better, a little better color rendition. This is more accurate with the colors. And once I've, and this is all done with acrylic paint, you can see exactly how I did this last week. I did some stamping, so there's just some, some random stamping. This one has a dog paw and just some, just some kind of hit and miss stamping here. And then I went back and used a circle stencil and, and just because it was easy and put some spots, polka dots in the background. So that's how we got to this point. All right, so you can see the color kind of washes out with this camera, but you got the idea. Now, we want to tint this canvas because it's way too bright for one thing. And also, if I put this applique, if I put Muppet on top of here, she's going to disappear. You see, she'll just disappear. And so we're going to tint this canvas. And so I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So I have a piece, a palette, um, pad of palette paper. Um, Ian wants to know if you can make a jelly plate with gelatin and how do you make the plate permanent? Yeah, Ian, if you will look on Lindsay the Frugal Crafters website, uh, she has, or on her channel, you can search it on her channel. She has videos on how to do that, and yes, you can make it permanent. I have never done it, but you can, and I know people who've done it and have had great success with it. So it it requires that you add something to the gelatin in order to make it permanent. Oh, thanks, Light and Laughter. So what I'm going to do is I have a couple of Dina Wakely paints. This happens to be lime because that's what I'm working with on this. Well, and I just dumped it in the paint, of course. Don't you know? This fuchsia paint, I'm telling you, Chance got into this. I should tell you this story. Chance got into this fuchsia paint, which now I've got on my hands. So I'm going to switch to a clean rag. Chance got into this fuchsia paint last week, and um, I didn't realize he'd gotten into it. And I was finding it. I still don't know how exactly he got into it, but he got it somewhere on my... Uh, it, there was some someplace. I don't know where. Anyway, I found some of it on the carpet, and I'm like, like several spots on the carpet, and I'm like, what is that? First, I thought it was blood, right? No, it was not. It was paint, and it took. And it, this is artist grade paint. Okay, this is artist grade paint. So it took a while to get it out of the carpet. And then, um, after uh, I don't know, it was several. It was several hours. It was actually after the Australian guests were here. I was petting Chance. And I thought he'd have been in a fight with Charlie because he had, you know, a place on his ear. And I patted it, and no, it was dried fuchsia paint. So that's how the paint got on the carpet. Somehow he got it on his ear and then got it on the carpet. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Scared me for a minute because I thought it was, um, I thought he'd been in a fight and I was going to have to go to the vet. But yeah, anyway, so I'm using these two colors of paint. Uh, fuchsia and lime and then I'm going to use glazing liquid and I have a couple of different kinds here this is the golden acrylic glazing liquid this one is Americana glazing medium and both of them will work fine the uh, golden products are usually more expensive okay so I'm going to put some of this in my um, paint and as I said this is lime and I want this pretty thinned out now there are varying schools about 
the percentage of medium that you can put in with paint and um, I'm more prone to get the con the color I want rather than worrying about the the exact amount of how much percentage of this can I put in with this color and so forth so that's what how I do it okay so I just mix the glazing liquid in with the paint and then I'm going to do the same thing with the fuchsia And this is a powerful color, and I have more here than I'm ever going to need, but we'll put, put it in a journal if we have some left over. All right, so then I'm just going to clean off my clean off my knife. So I just clean it off on a rag. And then I have a brush. So let me move this for a second. So I have just a regular paintbrush and I'm going to use some water. I'm mixing them because I want the color to be a lot lighter and I don't want to thin it down with water. I want to thin it with something so it's, the paint still has some body. So that's why I'm doing it. Can you see it still has body? If I mix that amount of water in with those paints, it would just be running off the palette. Hi, Zandra. Okay, so when I start working with acrylic paint, I always get the brush wet to start with and then dab it off on the, the rag. And then I'm going to just pick up some of this green. And so what I'm after here, and I'm just going to kind of put this all over the canvas because what I'm after is to tone down and if I need to, sometimes I do have to pick up a little bit of water with it to get the paint to move. I want to tone down those colors that are so bright and begin to change the color of the canvas a little bit. So I'm just going to put this kind of in the center part of the canvas. And you can always, if you tint it too much and get rid of too much of the color, you can always use a baby wipe. Like if I decide that this is too, too much, then I'll use a baby wipe and I'll wipe some of that back. If I want more of the orange and yellow to stay present. Okay, so mostly this is about the top half of the canvas that I'm working with the adding the lime green to it just to tint it down, add a little more interest to it. And I'm going to switch cameras so you guys can see the color better. Okay, so this way you should be able to see the color change a little bit better. You can see how the dots take on a more green cast, like so. Hi, Andrea. All right, so I've got that far. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this section of the canvas, the bottom section. I'm going to rinse out my brush. And I'm going to go into that bottom section of the canvas and I'm going to pick up a small amount of that fuchsia. If I get too much of the fuchsia, it will go. Can you see how very powerfully staining that is? And I'm going to brush that over the bottom section of this. And as I said, I may need to add just a smidgen of water. I mean just the tiniest little bit of water and I just do an X pattern around the canvas to tint the bottom part of this canvas. 
more heavily in the corners and the very bottom than anywhere else. As I move up into the canvas toward the top, toward the middle, um, and toward the center area of the canvas, so into the center part, I will um, get lighter and lighter. And sometimes the um, sometimes the color gets hung up in the can the weave of the canvas. I don't know if you can see this. Let me zoom in real close so you can really see what I'm talking about. You see right in in uh, this area here where the color is not going all the way down in the canvas. You can either leave that same thing here you can leave that or you can actually thin the paint down a little bit more it's just a matter of personal preference at that point okay so we'll keep playing with this a little bit longer but it just adds some color to the canvas and some depth more depth to the color Okay, so the top of the canvas has the green tint, for lack of a better word, and the bottom part of the canvas has this more reddish tint. Because remember, what we have to do here is we have to make this have enough difference that when we put our focal image on the canvas that she's going to be able to show up. Now I'll do some other things to make her show up. See if I can keep track of her tail over there. But you can see that she's now going to begin to pop up away from that canvas because I've tinted this area down here. At first, she was the same color as the background. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I do want to deepen the corners of the canvas a little bit more. And so what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to use umber. Okay, so this is umber. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take just a tiny little bit. I mean, it's really a small amount. And add some glazing liquid into it. Um, I'm going to paint the sides of the canvas, Dorothy. You missed everything, Race. You missed everything. So again, I'm mixing the glazing liquid into the paint. It maintains the consistency that I like, and yet it makes the paint have a different appearance. It's a more transparent look. And then I'm going to rinse my brush out and squeeze it dry. And then I'm going to hit this with some heat uh, to dry this. So we're going to dry this for a minute. Okay, so dry enough. So now I'm going to pick up a little bit of this umber paint. And I'm going to put this in the corners, just in the corners of the canvas to darken it down. Now if you have a real soft brush like this, a mop brush, you can put this kind of thing in place like so with one brush and then you can use the mop and you can use that to blend 
where the two colors meet. But you just kind of play with it until you get the color that you like. So I don't want to darken the entire thing, I just want to darken the corners. So it's going to have the look of kind of a glow in the middle. And when you have collage on a canvas like this, you're going to deal with edges of things and you kind of have to be okay with that. Because like right in here, there's an edge of a piece of collage paper, so that's never going to blend out real evenly. And that's, you know, you have to live with that because that is an edge of something. And you can always come back and make it even darker if you need to either with another coat of the umber or you could actually use a little tiny tiny bit of Payne's gray or black and you could do that okay so can you see how we're getting kind of getting a little bit more of a modeled or antique look um, acrylic paints always going to be um, permanent once it dries so the the glaze doesn't the glaze doesn't help it with do anything to the drying it just it thins it makes it a little more transparent and helps it move a little bit better sometimes the acrylic paint gets a little sticky I find and so the the glaze it the glaze just makes it work better I don't know how I'm stumbling over my words here the glaze makes the paint move better for me and it makes it more transparent so I can develop layers instead of if I just put straight paint on this it would go it the, the acrylic will cover and so the dark umber would just cover what was under that instead of letting the the layers show through and that's what I'm after I'm building layers of color where if you use water it's um it's so thin it will break down the pigment too much and I don't like what that does so the glaze allows me to maintain more of the color so you can look through it the color that I'm using is umber at the moment this is Dina Wakeley's umber is what I'm using for this one Okay, so we're going to do a little bit more here on this corner. So the glaze does a couple things. You know, it thins the paint without breaking it down like water does. It allows me to, to move it around and then it allows it to be more transparent so I can see through the layers of the color. So I hope that helps. keeps it the consistency of a paint instead of turning it into you know something that's too watery okay so there we've got some color going on so we've changed it and made it a little more interesting we may put a little bit more up here but it still has kind of the appearance of a glow from the inner part of the canvas and that's what I'm after so that it will glow around the subject which is the Muppet you can always come back and work on this again later once it's dry you can add more colors more glazes the one thing you can't do is do what I just did which is let it dry and then try to put more paint back on so I'm gonna have to do that later because I just dug a hole in the paint so I'll show you that you see right here where it looks like a hole the glaze in the paint had already started to dry and so then it just digs a hole in the paint so 
what you do in a case like that, just let it dry and come back and do it again. Um, it's more of a raw umber, but she just calls it umber. So it's just called umber, but in my opinion, it's more of a raw umber. Okay, so let me um, dry this, and then we'll see if we can fix that spot up there. But now what happens is all of these spots that were on here were the same color, but now it looks like I have used multiple colors to when I put those spots on. Not true. It's one color. Hi, Shirley. Okay, let's see if we can fix this place up here where I dug a hole. So I'm going to put a little bit more um, glaze in my paint because I used up what I was, what I had mixed. So we're going to mix a little bit more. It's kind of the consistency that, that I like. The consistency is that of about, um, if you take whipped cream, like heavy cream, and put it in a bowl and you're going to whip it up when it just first starts to get some air incorporated into it that's the consistency I like so it's not it's not going you know it hasn't been whipped into a um, like a whipped cream consistency you've just started to incorporate some air into it that's the consistency that I prefer. So it's just like you're beginning to thicken the heavy cream. So any of you that cook, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. If I need to add more to it, I'll do it later. Yeah, maybe like pudding. That's a good analogy. Now, what I don't want is a nice little stripe of color coming around. I want it to be kind of uneven. But it's kind of like putting before it sets up. Okay, so we're going to call that good. So you can kind of get the idea here, hopefully. But you can see it's darker around the edges, has more color down here at the bottom. And yet we've still got some darkening going on. I still might want this a little bit darker around the bottom. So let's go just a smidgen more. And that's the cool part about glazes is you can build them up. You know, you're not committed. If I was doing this with straight paint, um, it would it would obscure everything that's underneath it. So the glazes allow me to build it up to get the color I like.
And another thing about working with acrylic paint, it works really nicely if you can do this either at an easel or if you're standing up looking down on it because um, you, you, get, you tend to get so much glare from the lights when you're um, when you're look you know when it's flat and so you really need to get it in a place where the the light is not reflecting so strongly that you can't see what you're doing so a little bit here on the corners all right we're going to call it good so i've got some darkened darkened corners which i like okay so dorothy asked me about the edges and so what i'm going to do to start with on the edges is i'm going to use this um, fuchsia that I have left over and I'm going to come around the edges. So this is the fuchsia paint with the glaze in it and I'm just going to paint around the edges like so and if I get it up on top of the canvas usually what I do is I just take my finger and I just wipe it lightly across the top and then I will come back and actually do some more stuff on those edges because that that's something that I just play with back and forth and back and forth until I get the look that I'm after so I'm just using that brush and trying to fill in the weave of the canvas I don't mind if some of the collage elements peek through. That's okay with me. And then I just keep going. Then if I decide that I want a darker color, you know, if this is not dark enough, then I'll come back and add some more color later. But at least it has a, um, a starting point to work with. My... My, uh, that's why I have on a crap shirt, Laurel. <laughs> so if I get paint on my sleeves, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't have anything in my wardrobe. Literally, I have nothing in my wardrobe that is sacred. Because I will think, oh, I'm just going to go in the studio and just do this one thing. And the next thing I know, I've got paint out and I've got paint on it. And, you know, uh, one day... I'm usually fairly neat, but one day I dropped an ink pad on my front, and of course it was an archival ink pad, so it's permanent. I worked and worked and worked trying to get that paint or that ink out of that shirt. Fortunately, it was an old shirt, so I wasn't too upset about it, but yeah, yeah, believe me. I have my fair share of uh, painty, inky stuff. And then you just keep going. So real quickly, we'll paint around the rest of this. And then you can always tin, tint this down by coming back over it with the umber and the glaze. Or you can come back over it with black, but I would definitely mix glaze in with it so that it has some uh, transparency. So you can control the intensity of the color. That's how I like to do it. I don't claim, claim in any form or fashion to be an acrylic expert. I just do what I like. And that's what I show you is what I like, you know, what works for me. But I am by and not in any form or fashion a fine art, fine artist in acrylic paint. Now you can frame things like this or um, you can just let the acrylic whatever you do to the edges here you can just let that be your framing and it is very fashionable to 
to uh, leave these kinds of stretched canvases. Sorry. Forgot that that would ring in my computer. Sorry, you guys. Spam, right, right in the middle of the stream. We got a spam phone call. Don't you love it? Whoops. Okay. Lost my chat. <laughs> Um, do I have the list of art supplies? If you want to go over to howtogetcreative.com to the um, blog post from last week, you'll see supplies there. Also, if you look at the YouTube video from last week, right here on YouTube, and you look in the description box, I believe that I put all the supplies in that as well. And when I'm finished with the class here today, I will put that information of everything I used also in the description box. So there you go. Okay, so let me clean up my hands just a little bit here. All right, any questions so far? So far off with their heads, I know. Spam phone calls should be illegal, but yeah. Even if you're on the no call list, it doesn't here it doesn't make any difference. All right, so I'm going to get the worst of the paint off my hands at the moment with baby wipe. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm getting trying to get some of it off. Yeah, that fuchsia is a really bright, pretty color, isn't it? Okay, so I'll have to go back and repair some of this later, just because when I'm doing it on stream. It, um, you know, you, you, things don't have the drying time that they need and so forth, but uh, we'll get the idea. Okay. So let me hit this with the heat gun. So hang on just a minute. Let me dry this a little bit anyway. See right here when I touched it, I um, put my fingers right in it. But when you're doing edges of things, that's when you really want to put things, you know, aside and just let them sit. Hi, Cherry. You want to just let it sit and let the paint cure. But of course, we're not doing that, right? <laughs> because why would we do that? It would You would be here way too long if we had to do that. So we're just going to move on and I'll deal with the consequences later. All right. So now... What we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to put this applique onto uh, the canvas. So I'm going to get rid of the paint and hopefully keep Chance out of the fuchsia paint. That would be good. So this really needs to be completely dry, which it's marginally dry. And I'm going to move this kind of out of the way here for a minute.
And I'm going to bring back my applique here. So this is going to be the last thing that we're going to do on this particular canvas. And then I'm going to switch to one of the cat canvases. Hello, Barb. Nice to see you. All right. So what I have here now is I have a mat. This is a Tim Holtz uh, Ranger nonstick mat that I have on a board. It is a um, cruddy mat. I mean, this has got holes in it, and I've done alcohol ink on it and everything else. But it's it's not, and it's scratched very deeply here in a few places. But it's still okay. You know, it's still something I can work with for purposes like this. And this is a great place to use it. Okay. And so what I have is I've taken my applique that I made of the dog. So here she is. She's all, everything's glued together. And I'm going to turn it face down on here and I need to get my glue brush. So I'll be right back. My glue brush lives in water. I have a sink in my studio, so my glue brush lives in water all the time because um, that's the only way you can keep a brush like this from drying out. You can see what terrible shape it's in. Um, and what I'm going to be using, ideally what you want to use to put something like this down because there's some thickness involved with the fabric, you want to use a regular gel. I don't have any regular gel. I'm out of it. So I'm using soft gel. The difference between regular gel and soft gel is that the soft gel is a softer consistency. It's, it um, is not as thick as the regular gel. If you've had a container of soft gel that's been around for a while, it may be the consistency of regular gel. But this is um, this is a little softer than I'd like for it to be. It's the best that I have at the moment, so it's we're going to go for it and use it. Okay, so here we go. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to apply this soft gel. So it, you know, it's like a really thick kind of glue. And you need something like this because of the thickness of the fabric. This is not paper. And because I'm working on this nonstick surface, um, I'm just going to brush right off of the applique so that I'm going to, and it doesn't matter if I get it on the front because I'm going to be putting it on the front anyway. And so what I'm trying to do is to thoroughly coat the back of this applique with the soft gel. Now I'm not gonna I'm not going to uh, have lumps on it hopefully, but I do want it to be thoroughly saturated and coated. All right, like so. And it's going to get a little unruly here for a minute, but uh, so I'm going to set her off to the side just for a second. And we're going to come to the canvas. And so the canvas is going to have a coat of gel on it also in the area where the dog is going to go. And hopefully the paint is dry enough that it's not going to come up with my gel. If it does, I'll just be in repair mode later. So a nice coat of gel, an even coat. You don't want it to be one of those, you know, gloppy messes. And now I'm going to put my applique, my Muppet Girl is going to go onto the canvas. So this is another one of those places that you want to kind of be up over it and get her on there as evenly as you wish. You do have to work kind of at a with some speed because the gel will start to set up. And 
and because it's fabric it's going to want to stretch and move around on you so you have to start um, smoothing things out and I know my, my arms in the way I apologize but um, you do want to make sure that you have a coat of the gel under it you cannot do this with something that's thin so you've got to have a substance that's got some thickness to it that's why the gels work really well and the regular gel will work better because it's thicker and it will grab even quicker and start setting up better but as I said soft gel is what I have and so that's what we're going to work with okay once I've got it pretty much Um, in place and it's and it's uh, straightened out no gaps or you know anything weird going on and I don't want to forget her tail so let me um, add her tail here and I'm not watching the chat here for just a second so I'm going to lift her up before she gets completely dry so I can put this little tail. And because this tail is so thin, I'm not going to try to put gel on the back of it at the moment. I'm just trying to stick her tail under the body. And then kind of feed it up into the gel that I put down there. Okay, so I've got her little tail stuck in there. So there she is. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a coat, hopefully without moving the tail, a coat of the gel medium, soft gel mat, over it. And then I want to put this over the entire applique. I'm calling it an applique just because I made it all in one piece so I could put it down in one piece rather than piecing it together on the canvas. It's like this is the easiest way for me to do it. So that's what I did. So I'm calling it an applique. So I'm putting a coat of this. Now of course all of the materials that I used for the applique, the fabric, which I painted all of this myself. All of that has to be permanent stuff. Okay, so you can't use any water soluble products on this um, or you would start moving them around once you come over the top of it with the gel. So give me just a second, let me finish getting this on here and then I will look at any questions or comments that you have. And then I'm going to give the entire canvas a coat of the gel, uh, soft gel. If I had regular gel, I would be putting regular gel on here. Either one is going to work. You just have to kind of work with whatever the properties of the substance that you're using. And that just comes with experience. The regular gel is better because it's thicker and it will um, hold, it will grab quicker. This is not something you could do with Mod Podge or you might, I don't even think you could do it with Collage Podge. Um, this is going to have to be something that is thicker. But um, to work with a white glue might be a challenge. So, you know, really and truly the best thing I know to use for these kinds of applications is to use something like a gel medium. And a matte medium is much thinner than this and uh, that's not that's not going to work very well at all. So a gel medium is really what you want. Now it's going to look kind of milky at this stage and that is okay because that's just the nature of the gel. It's going to look kind of milky and <clears throat> over time it's going to dry and it's going to become clear. Now this is the same kind of thing as when I was working with the acrylic paint a little bit ago. Once it starts to dry you have got to leave it alone. 
If you don't, you're going to start digging holes down through the, the paint or down through the gel medium. Okay, so um, I think I've got everything coated. And so I need to leave it alone. And so, yeah, now I'll answer questions. Okay. Um... Thanks, I'm glad you like it. Okay, if you guys, I don't know, um, I don't mean to be offensive in any way, but if you guys could keep the, um, if possible, if you could keep the chat in English, that would be really helpful because um, I, don't, I don't mean to, you know, cause issues with anybody because I know we have people that speak other languages, but if you could keep it in English, that would be really helpful. Okay, so let's go back to this. Um, and so here is our, now admittedly the colors are not the same in from this camera. Um, Can you do it with just cutting out the fabric? Sure, absolutely. Hi, Josie. I just like the detail of the stitching around it. And so that's why I use, and I like to combine fabric and paper and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that is what we're gonna do and we're gonna let that sit. Anytime you're working with glues like this, this kind of stuff that gets sticky, this can glue your lid. Um, it can dry and glue the lid right onto your container and then you cannot get it off. Sometimes you can't ever get it off. So what I'm putting on here is a coat of petroleum jelly. And I don't do it all the time, but I do it occasionally. And what that does is that prevents the lids from sticking. So you can put this back on and that will not stick. So you do have to reapply it periodically, but that keeps your lids from uh, from adhering themselves permanently to the jars. Okay, let me get my gluey brush back in the water, so I'll be right back again. And then what's going to happen is that this has to completely dry, okay? So this has to be set aside and, and it's got to completely dry. You can't, you really can't rush this step. So it, it's going to take several hours for this to completely get itself um, to the point that I can continue to work on it. So I'm going to just pick this up and that's why I've got them in stages. And so we're going to set this one aside and then I'm going to pick up one of the cat canvases that is at this stage. So you're going to see a different canvas now. So put this aside, let it dry and completely cure. Okay. <coughs> So here's another one, and this is um, one of the cats. So I've got two of them. So you can see this is in a similar, um, pretty much the same state as the last one was. Just like this. Okay. And what is missing from this one now is he doesn't have a mouth and he doesn't have whiskers. And so we're going to um, add some whiskers and a mouth here in a little bit. <coughs> and um, But for the moment, I want to show you some things that we can do with this. So this one I glued on earlier today. Let me show this to you in the other camera. Yes, the gel medium dries completely clear. This is because this is an 11 by 14, it's a little tough to show it to you, but I think you got the idea. 
Okay, so this is one of the cats. This cat is... Oh, and by the way, I don't try to wipe this stuff off. Well, I just need to move this. I don't try to wipe this off the mat. I just let it dry completely on the mat. This is the gel medium. And then I use a scraper, and then I just scrape it off once it's dry. So that's what I do with that. Okay, back to the canvas. So this canvas is this guy. Okay, so there's the cat and there's the cat. The addition being that I added a bow tie because don't you know every cat needs a bow tie? Okay, so he has a bow tie on, but you can clearly see that he has this one has a mouth and whiskers, and this one does not. And of course, that makes him look a little strange, right? So we are going to do that next. Okay, so here we are. And what I have is some black fabric that, um, this has been jelly plate printed. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just, I'm going to look at my cat picture. So I just have it here for reference. And I can either pick some spots in here, you know, that have some, some paint on it. Or I could, I've got some other areas where it's nice and dark. So we're just going to... I don't know. We'll just pick a spot here. I've got a spot right in here, so I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to cut. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but I'm just going to cut a strip. I'm going to cut several strips, about maybe an eighth of an inch wide. And it will give me something to start with. So I'm going to have these be pretty thin. And I probably will have these canvases in the shop over at howtogetcreative.com. <clears throat> If any of you are interested in them, I probably will put them up for sale. I don't know exactly when I'll get them up there. Probably sometime next week. <clears throat> okay, so I have several little strips. And then I need that little curved thing for his mouth. And so I'm just going to take um, a chunk of fabric right here. <clears throat> Bye Margaret. Thanks for coming. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a curve, and I'm just doing this by eye, just, you know, because I can always adjust it. Um... as I go. And so I'm going to let this be part of his little mouth here. And I'll adjust the size as I get the other part of it. And I just kind of, I just kind of mess around with it, honestly, until I get what I like. So we've got a mouth and that'll work. 
and that looks reasonably close to to what he looks like in the drawing. I might make this one a little shorter. And this is truly what I do. I just mess with it until I get what it is I want. And because I've got glue on my hands, it's a... Uh, Things are wanting to stick to me. Okay, good enough. Okay, so let's go back to our strips. And I'll do this just to get the idea before I start gluing. And so I'm going to take, and I do have my, my big drawing, and so I can get the proportionate length of the whiskers. The cats won't like me selling them. <laughs> well, probably so, but you know, we just won't tell them. We just will not tell them. Now, Muppet doesn't have whiskers, just the cats have whiskers. So I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm just using my, um, my paper, the copy that is the right size, and I'm just laying my little strips on those whiskers and just cutting them off so that they're relatively the right size and then just laying them on here and of course you know you can take time with something like this I can take time and I could uh, make them more pointy I could make them skinnier I could do all kinds of things Um, do I have a place of mine to display them? No, I don't. So I'm probably just going to sell them. And if they don't sell, I'll put them someplace. Okay, then we have one more, which is here. And so, you know, that looks reasonably close to the way that it's drawn. And then, of course, I have, even though it's my drawing, I have artist prerogative to change it the way that I want it to go. So if I need to adjust something, I will do that. Okay? So we have those little, little bits and pieces um, ready to go. Now, having said that, I'm going to move those to the side. So I'm just going to move whiskers to the side, honestly. Yeah, okay. Um, hang on just a second. I need to deal with this. So I'll be right back with you in just a second.
Okay. So I'm going to just move all these little pieces off of here, like so. And we'll glue those on after a while. But I just wanted you to see what they were going to look like, okay? And the way that I will glue them on is I will use the Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. And the reason I'll use this is because this has a tea tiny little... Um, Um, tip and so I can put a fine fine little strip of glue there uh, okay sorry I had to deal with that okay so now what we're gonna do I'm not gonna glue those on right at the moment And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you about doing some, how I'm going to shade this. So I have these um, Pit Artist pens. These are the big brush styles. And I have different colors. I have a whole bunch of different colors. And some of them are the thin style. These are a smaller brush. And some of them are the big brush. Um, the biggest difference in these, like these are the same uh, same exact colors, but the difference is the size of the brush. So you see the size of the brush? See how that's different? It's the exact same color. Both of them work just fine. Doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to show you how I shaded this and we'll do some of it. Some of him is already shaded, but not all of him. So for example, the bow tie has not been shaded to make it more interesting. So I'm going to pick a color that's darker than this red. So I have a, a magenta it's called, but it's actually a dark red. And so what I'm going to do, and this only works because there is a coat of matte medium or gel medium, the gel medium over the whole thing. That's why this is going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pen and I'm going to come around the bow because the knot in the bow tie would be on top and I'm going to put some of this color and then blend it with my finger. And I may do that a couple of times and I may come back and do it later, um, even more later. But I'm just brushing it out with my fingertip. And that is going to make the, the tie, part of the bow tie, kind of recede away from the knot. So I'm going to do those kinds of things. Mostly the cat, I have him all shaded, but I have not shaded around him. So we're going to do that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a color that is similar to the background but darker. So I have, um, this is deep scarlet red. Let's start down here in the, where the leg is. And I'm going to need to move my little whiskers and so forth out of the way. So here is his leg. So we're going to start down here. And so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mark on the canvas. And you need to do this in small sections. Don't, don't go all the way around the, the cat. Because if you do, you cannot blend it out. It will dry too fast. And if the color doesn't show, you can always switch to a darker color. But what this is going to do is pop the cat, it just has the illusion, it doesn't literally pop the cat away from the canvas, but it will have the illusion of bringing the cat up away from the surface. Now if you get something that looks too stripey, like on the camera this is looking too stripey, then you can pick another color that um, 
if you have it and just blend that even a little more out from it and that will help kind of soften that out so that's what we're going to do here is just go around the um, and I won't do the whole thing but I'll do parts of it here And you don't have to use just one color. You can switch and use multiple colors. There's no nothing that says you can only use one color because you started with red, you have to stay with red. And this does not work if you don't have a coating of some kind under, uh, under the marker. So I often will come uh, with a one color of marker and then I'll come back with other colors of marker later to make it darker. Or if you want to, you can do more than one color at a time. And as long as there is as long as the applique itself has been coated, which this one had, I could do all the shading and stuff on top of the cat also. Oh, thanks Becky, I'm glad you got it. And then you can just keep going. But you've got to keep the blending going. Um, you can't, you can't like I said, you can't go all the way around it and then blend it. You've got to blend as you go. Otherwise, because once these markers are dry, these um, pit artist pens, once they dry, they're on there permanently. You cannot move them. So hopefully you can kind of see how he's beginning to pop up away from the surface of the canvas a little bit. And let's do the side of his head so I can glue his whiskers on. And if this orange is not enough, I will come back with another color. But I just wanted to get around his head so that we can actually put his whiskers in place. In fact, I want to do a little bit more red here just a little bit here and there And if you get um, too much in one spot, sometimes you can spit on your finger and, and work on it, or you can use a baby wipe. And sometimes I'll just get a little moisture on my finger. And if it gets too dry too fast, you'll just have to blend it with another color. Okay. And that looks pretty good. I'm pretty okay with that. 
working out the rest of this needs to be blended, but just so you get the idea. The India ink means that it will dry permanently. It's a type of ink, so these are not, so this is a permanent waterproof ink pen once it's dry. So that's the type of ink that's in those markers. Okay, so we kind of got the idea of the um, of doing the the shading around the cat. So I've given you the idea about that. Now down here at the bottom, because this is very dark, I'm going to go to let's start with this dark red and see what it looks like. So I'm going to come right around him, the bottom, because he needs a place to sit. Now, of course, you can do things like this with um, paint and so forth, but this is by far easier for me. So I'm just going to give him a place to sit. So I don't want the shadow really to be black, but I do want it to have, um, you know, the look of him being anchored to the surface of something, even though there's not really anything here. Now, when you get over to this other section where he's got, you know, his other foot, now his feet are kind of wonky because that's how they were in the picture I'm going to use something and I'm going to decide about where my um, I'd like for this to be even so I'm going to just lift my ruler up a little bit they're actually fairly even with his two little feet there and I'm going to make try to make this side and this side close to the same level trying to do this where you guys can see it and where I can see it. Okay, I think that's pretty much the close. Okay, so that way it gives him something to sit on. So he's not, it's not like, even though he has been glued onto this canvas, it's not quite so much like, ah, he has no reason to be there. Okay. All right. So we've got him, I've shown you how to anchor him down. I've got India ink on my fingers, so I'm going to clean my fingers off a little bit. And now we're going to glue on his mouth and his whiskers. So let's do that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up one of his little mouth sections. And I'm going to just draw a little tiny section of glue. And I'm going to put his little mouth in place. Now, this glue, the Scotch Quick Dry, dries with a sheen to it. So once this is dry, I will come back over the top of this one more time with the gel medium. So that um, I can, let's see, I need to put some glue on something. 
here we'll just put it here so that it um, makes everything the same sheen so everything will be the matte color matte sheen it's not color it's sheen okay so there we've got that part of his mouth these little bitty things are the hardest things to hang on to And some people work really beautifully with tweezers. I don't. So I will let that dry and then I will come back and come back over it and touch it up with the gel medium so that everything's the same uh, tint of color the same sheen of it's the same sheen of reflectivity yes see this is what happens when you talk and do things at the same time you get yourself all confused all right let me put the whiskers back on here so I know where they go basically okay this one goes about like so this one goes about like so and this one goes about like This one's a little bit long for my taste, so we're going to alter. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to lift this one up. Draw a little line of glue. And whisker him. Okay, so next one. And again, the reason I'm using the Scotch Quick Dry is because it has a little, very, very fine nozzle tip. Um, now, I'm not saying I can't guarantee that all the glues like that on the market now have the same thing. Uh, because I've had this one for literally years. But you can always get this a glue like this and put it in one of those fine line bottles. Okay, so we got whiskers. He's got whiskers on one side. Now we have one more side to go. So let me lay them out first and then we'll glue them. Yeah, he's he's a pretty happy cat as cats go. As Chance Cat could go, he's a pretty happy cat. And the whiskers are um, not the same from one side to the other. They're not symmetrical. They're not supposed to be because, you know, because you know that's how he is.
And if you hear Charlie, that's who's whining in the background. He's now ready to come out. He's been in there long enough. Thank you very much. He has the most mournful meow when he wants out. I mean, it's pitiful. Pitiful sounding. So I'm just lifting up the tips to make sure I have glue right out at the end. I didn't want to put down too much to start with. And then if there are little ravels, I'm kind of massaging those back into the glue. And hopefully they will glue themselves down to the canvas. Okay. All right. So, here we go. So there he is with his whiskers on. Now, once this dries, I will come back in and I will use the same markers and I will go around the whiskers so that they get look like they're popping up off the surface a little bit. And because the eyes were too difficult for me to stitch, I'm going to faux stitch them. So what I have here is a Posca paint pen. This is the extra fine paint pen. So these are the Uni Posca paint pens. This is black. And for the eyes here, I used white acrylic paint to put in the sparkle dots in the eyes. So this is a paint pen, which means you have to shake it up. I don't know these crazy animals honestly here it's the weather as much as anything there's no sunshine today so that's always a problem so I always start my uh, my paint pens on a piece of paper so I can see that they're going and then I'm just gonna put little stitched faux stitched lines around the eye Actually, it's on the eye that I'm doing them. And this is paint, so it's going to take a minute for it to dry. And then I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. But you do have to be careful when you're working with paint like this that you don't put your hand right in it. And that's going to bring the eyes out so they're going to be more present. Now you could do that same kind of thing any place that you want to bring out detail. You can detail it with paint markers, providing you have the color paint marker that you want to use. So I'm going to show it to you here. All right, so here is... A good look at his head and you can see some of the shading around you know where I've done it there's not I've there's more yet to come but you know you can see a lot of it there's um, there's no need to spray fix uh, the surface because once I go over it with the gel medium the, first of all, the paint, the, the, these markers dry permanently and, um, and everything will be sealed in using that um, gel medium. So 
there's no reason to, I mean, I could spray over the top of it, but it really doesn't need it. So you can see his eyes and then you can see the table or the surface or whatever he's sitting on. Pretty. <laughs> Okay, so, so those are the steps for this, um, and here's one that is completely finished. This is the other one that we started last week, and he's completely done. So he's had all of, so this is Charlie, so he's had all, uh, and it, his background was a different color. He was, he was the more purpley background. And so he is, but he is completely done. So you can see his wonky whiskers and he has a bow tie. And he's been shaded all the way around. And then the very last thing I do is put my name. So it, my name is down here. It's obscured a little bit because I don't want it to stick out too terribly much. But there is the other one. So I'll let you take a look at him up close. So here is his face. Now these we'll take pictures of these and have them on the website so you can see them a lot better. But um, they're big enough that they're a little challenging to show uh, on the stream. He's an ornery one, let me tell you. So they're all made. The fabrics are all fabrics that I painted in some form or fashion. As you can see. He's, let's see if you can see the table down here. Yes, you can see the table. Now this one you can probably see a little bit of um, glistening, reflective quality here. This one I used some Inca Gold in purple or violet or whatever it's called. Violet. So I used some of this Inca Gold and I went around the edges and you can kind of see it if I tip it in the light you can see a little bit of it around the edges and around the edge and around the very edge you can see it kind of reflecting in the light and that way it just frames it gives it a little bit of an additional frame so this has the violet Inca gold around the edge and you can see it here I think you can see it really well here so it just does something a little extra. So I'll do that on the other ones as well. So that just gives them more of a framed appearance. So you can see it really well there. Thanks, Sandra. So there is that one. Okay, so now we'll take one more look at them this way. And we'll take a look at the Muppet one. So the gel medium has dried down pretty well on this one. It's not totally dry yet, but it's it's fairly dry. Uh, now bear in mind that the colors are not quite as accurate as you're seeing. They're much brighter in person. I'll give you one more. I'm actually running myself straight out of room here. <laughs> Imagine such a thing. So I'll give you one more look at her since she's drying down now okay so she had to have a little eye job going on we should probably put her eyeballs in we'll do that before we go let me um, put her the sparkle dots in her eyes these were just cut out of black fabric. So what I have is white acrylic paint and a stick. Let's see, where is the stick? Okay, so this is just a skewer. And so I'm going to put her sparkle dots in. Because that way, she has some place to look. I always like it better when they have sparkle dots in their eyes. 
Okay, so now we'll look at her again. Okay, so here she is with bows in her hair, and I'll do the same thing on the bows. I'll go do faux stitching around the, the bows, and I'll do some shading and so forth. Yeah, the colors are completely different on these two cameras. But one is an HD camera, one's a webcam, so that's what uh, makes the difference. So there is that one. Okay, so they start out, this is kind of the beginning stage right here, okay? So this is kind of the beginning. Then it moves to this, so it becomes more finished, okay? So it's more finished with more details and so forth and more shading and what have you. And then... When I'm finished with them and they have all their final, final stuff, of course, again, the background was a different color, but when their final, final stuff is all done, that's what it looks like. Okay. So there we go. Just so you can see, like from the beginning to the end. So I don't know how much you can tell, but they're quite different from each other, even, even beyond color. So... I'm in the cosmetic surgery too. <laughs> Think so. Okay, so that is that. Let's see. Let me check my list and see if there's anything else I needed to cover today. I don't think so. So it's time for the sponsors. So if you guys have any questions, Put a sparkle dot on the nose too. Yep, could. Absolutely could. So let me get my table readjusted just a smidge here. Time for the sponsors to come do their thing now that they're quiet. That's always the way it is. It's always the way it is. Everything quiets down. Then I let them out. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I was painting your picture today. I was making a picture of you. Yeah, I was making a picture about you today. All right, here it is. This is Chance. Are you coming up here? Come here. Don't start coughing. If you do, you'll have to get down. Mm -hmm. Can you lie down? Let's fix your face first. Yeah, let's fix your face. There we go. Okay. Yes, there we go. Okay. Hi, Linda. Good. I'm glad you were here. Oh, this is your first. Okay, good. All right. So, that was a busy day. I think I need a nap. <laughs> so, thanks everybody for being here. I appreciate you, uh, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for coming and spending your afternoon with me or your morning or whatever time of day it is for you evening or whatever thank you so much for being here with us me and the sponsors this is charlie this is chance charlie was the big fat one in the canvas chance was the skinny one and we're so glad you were here oh thanks lorraine glad you liked them thank you so much i'm glad you enjoyed it i you know, I don't always have everything stepped out quite as much as I did today. Sometimes we just play. <laughs> Sometimes we just mess around, you know. Um, so you never know. Everybody's shedding around here. So now we got cat hair flying, don't we? Mm -hmm. Now we do. All right, so the boys and I are going to go. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you had, had some fun and you had a little uh, break in your drama-free Friday weekend. Maybe it's a start to your weekend. 
And I will be back next week at the same time, 2 p.m. Eastern, every Friday. And I will see you then. The boys and I will be back. And Muppet, of course. She, she makes an appearance sometimes. Thanks for being here. I will see you next week. And remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.